With the release of Loki Season 2, we now have a new Marvel Cinematic Universe series to add to our collection. So here's my ranking of every MCU Disney Plus show from my least favourite to my favourite. Hello and welcome to Cinemates, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. As always, I need to set out my criteria for the ranking. Firstly, this is only going to include Disney Plus Marvel Cinematic Universe shows, so stuff like the Netflix Defenders shows or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. aren't going to count. And I'm not going to include the I Am Groot series in this ranking, it's just a collection of shorts designed for children, so it's not really fair to compare 5 minute disconnected shorts to multiple hours of connected television. Also, I'm going to be grouping Loki Season 1 and 2 together as one series rather than individual seasons because really it feels like one story. Something like The Mandalorian feels like three distinct seasons. Sure there's a through line between each but overall each season is a very specific story for Mando. While Loki season 1 and 2 very much feel like two halves that together make a show and so I'm going to rank them together. Now I'm ranking this based on how effective they are as a TV show, their quality, consistency, rewatchability, characters, story and really what it comes down to is what shows are my favourite. And sometimes that can be quite hard especially with these Marvel shows where there are some big positives but also some big negatives. So when it's quite close, it just comes down to what show would I rather watch right now. But without further ado, let's get right into the ranking. Number 9, Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion is not only my least favourite MCU show, it's my least favourite thing in the MCU ever. While I do have issues with most of the series on this list, most of them can be fixed with a few tweaks, like changing the number of episodes, changing the villain or changing the finale. However, with Secret Invasion, it's not quite that simple. To fix this show would require fundamental massive changes that would change the whole show because I think Secret Invasion just completely misses the mark. It completely fails its premise of a grounded political thriller by removing any type of mystery or intrigue. It fails its characters by not explaining Nick Fury's past in action towards the scrolls. It keeps Rhodey's transformation vague and it kills off two important MCU supporting characters with seemingly no benefit to the plot itself. And it fails its story with very slow boring episodes which seem to be building towards an interesting finale but it just ends with the worst big CGI fight of all time with two characters fighting who literally have every superpower. The ending of this show feels completely rewritten, throwing in random ideas like the president and the public turning against scrolls, which could be a whole season on its own, but it's just a throwaway scene for the last few minutes. It wastes an interesting comic book storyline, which has been teased for years now, and other than a few interesting philosophical conversations and a great performance by Olivia Coleman, I just think this show has very few redeeming qualities, and so it's easily the worst MCU Disney Plus show on my list. Number 8, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Next up we have Falcon and the Winter Soldier and while it is significantly better than Secret Invasion it's still a very flawed series and it pains me to have it so low on this list because Civil War is my favourite MCU movie and with this project being a follow up to that and the other Russo Bros projects in the MCU this feels like a premise made for me but unfortunately it just ends up feeling like a fairly bland and inconsequential chapter of the MCU. For every good idea in this show, there's also a bad one. They tried to give us grounded, realistic, sympathetic villains dealing with the result of the blip, but it just leads to villains who don't really feel like villains and they don't have much of a threat. Zemo is great fun to return, but ultimately he has very little effect on the plot. John Walker is a fascinating new addition to the MCU, but his redemption felt rushed and they didn't know what to do with him by the end of the show. There's some interesting ideas about race in America, but the big political messaging in the final speech feels very heavy handed and very forced. Bucky dealing with his past is is the emotional through line of this show a really intriguing aspect but the final resolution is shown off screen so it doesn't feel like we get the satisfying conclusion to his checkered past that we deserve so for everything that this show does well or it tries to set up that is interesting it fails at the final step now there are some good things in here the dynamic between sam and bucky is great like i mentioned zemo and john walker are great supporting characters and the action here does live up to civil war there are some fantastic action sequences in here definitely the best of the marvel shows ultimately i feel like the fix this show it even needed more episodes to really flesh out these character arcs and establish the villain as a greater threat or more likely it shouldn't have been a show at all it should have been a movie where we cut out the flag smashes completely we make Zemo the villain pulling the strings behind the scenes and focus on Sam, Bucky and John Walker removing all the filler because it does feel like there's a good movie in here. Overall I think this show doesn't stick the landing for its heroes or villains and that just gives me very little desire to re-watch this show again and it just ends up feeling like the step of Sam Wilson going from Falcon to Captain America can be skipped. 
Number 7 What If Marvel Studios first animated show is a hard one to rank because it's so wildly inconsistent and that's not surprising given the nature of its premise. Some of these what if ideas are going to be better than others and different audiences are going to connect to different stories in different ways. What if is best when it's telling these fun premises playing in the sandbox of the MCU and at times hitting us with surprisingly emotional story moments and it's worst when it's trying to be more than that. The original idea of what if comics are just standalone one of comics that answer the question what if and so this series makes the baffling decision to try to connect each one of these stories together to tell a wider story and at the time week to week as I was watching the show I was on board I was interested to see where they were going with this connecting the multiversal spiders web however when the stories do merge I don't think it really works it feels rushed the Gamora episode was cut and it feels like another episode was needed to really establish the new multiverse heroes as a team build their relationships with each other and explain why each member of the team is there because some of them feel far more pivotal than others I hoped Marvel were building towards this clever well thought out connected story where every character was going to play a key pivotal role that made them unique to save the day but it didn't feel like that and it just felt like cramming a bunch of random characters together and having Doctor Strange do most of the work. I understand that Marvel are the guys who do the connected universe but I don't think they needed to do it here and I think they should have just let these episodes sit on their own as standalone what if stories. So while I might return to some specific episodes for their unique premises, emotional depth or cool animated action, overall with this failed team up, vastly different episode quality and some questionable voice acting, I don't think I'll ever watch this show again from start to finish. Number six, Moon Knight. Again, like Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Secret Invasion, Marvel took a premise that on paper I was really interested in that I thought I would like and fumbled it. A darker, more mature story dealing with horror and psychological elements with everyone's favorite underrated Marvel Comics character, Moon Knight. And while episode one promised this, the rest of the show really wasn't that. And it ended up being a weird, globe-trotting, Egyptian mythological, Indiana Jones-style, archeological, swashbuckling, CGI superhero adventure. And if that sounds messy, that's because it was. On one hand, it's kind of fun that each episode was vastly different with its own unique tone and premise, but on the other not one of those later episodes were as intriguing as the first episode which stuck closer to the core of the character and to me that was one of this season's biggest mistakes it took away the mystery and intrigue of the character what makes Moon Knight so interesting in the comics is that you never know if the gods are real or not you never know if he really has powers or if it's all in his head and in this show you just completely lost the mystery of the character and in doing so took away what makes him unique and even if you accept this as a completely different interpretation of the character that is more explicitly magical and supernatural I think the show still fails because it rushes its finale and that's a mistake that so many of these Marvel Disney Plus shows make they set up too many ideas for only six episodes that they leave all of the conclusion to the one final episode and it almost always feels rushed and it almost always ends in a big CGI fight that feels so generic and so different from the initial unique premise that the first episode was built on now I've been quite harsh on this show and I know it has its fans so what stops it from being at the bottom of my list and well that is Oscar Isaac who absolutely carries this show making it so much more watchable than it should have been. Because Isaac is phenomenal here and he gave us one of the best performances in the MCU, really bringing these different personalities to life, making them feel like unique characters that you care about in different ways. And the show is the strongest when it's showcasing his acting abilities with very personal emotional moments. So Moon Knight ends up in a weird position where we have a fantastic actor putting in a fantastic performance while the story itself takes away most of the aspects that make Moon Knight interesting. And I just wish this whole season of the show was more like the first episode, keeping things vague and grounded and mysterious and focusing on the more personal side of things instead of the implied supernatural nature of the character. Sure, for this more supernatural version of the character, more episodes could have helped to flesh out the finale and to make it feel less rushed. But for the character himself, I don't think this needs Needed to be a show at all. I don't even think it needed to be a film. I think this would have worked better as a Marvel special presentation, like we got with Werewolf by Night, where we see a glimpse into this character's life, seeing his different personalities, balancing Moon Knight, and with the short runtime, we would have been able to keep the supernatural elements more vague, like in the comics. And I think just a one off hour long special, which ends with unanswered questions and Moon Knight just repeating his daily struggle again, would have left a stronger impression instead of a show which feels like it's pushing Moon Knight through the MCU template and losing what really makes him special. Number Number five, Ms. Marvel. Speaking of shows absolutely carried by performance, next up we have Ms. Marvel, where Imam Vellani's youthful energy really feels like a breath of fresh air in the MCU. They also made me care about her family, friends, and
and culture in a really endearing way and it gives us smaller personal moments that you wouldn't necessarily have time for in a movie. This show is best when it's dealing with the personal life of Kamala Khan. The superhero elements in the show are fine, the action is fine, the villains are quite possibly the worst that MCU ever has, super generic, super predictable, super forgettable. The show also really slows down when it gets to episodes 4 and 5 where we go to Pakistan and we take a trip to the past. Sure what I was learning was interesting because it's not an era of history that I know much about but it felt so out of place in this show and it really killed the pacing and it killed what was working about the show. Small scale personal high school superhero story in Jersey City. So overall I loved the performance by Imam Vellani and I enjoyed the slower exploration into her life and culture but as a superhero series it fails at the core superhero elements and it really drags in the middle. Number four She-Hulk. Oh boy I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this one but I don't think She-Hulk is that bad. Absolutely it has its issues but for the most part I think it succeeds at what it was trying to do. Again we have a great performance by Tatiana Maslany who really brings this character to life in a pretty comic accurate way. The humor, the slightly more adult themes, the fourth wall breaking, it all feels straight out of a She-Hulk comic. For the most part this show is trying to be a sitcom and not some serious superhero show and if you think of it like that it actually works quite well. Short 20 minute episodes not driven by plot but focused on the life of Jennifer Walters. I think it uses the medium of TV well with more episodes than usual with each episode having more of an episodic nature instead of pushing the overall story forward. But the show does make some big mistakes. For a show that really seems to hit its stride when it's focusing on sitcom stuff like her dating life or career clashing with her superhero life, it's bizarre to me that they tried to build up intrigue for an overarching story and a greater villain which ultimately led nowhere. I don't think releasing this show week to week really benefited the show in any way because it left us to speculate about the wider mystery of the story and it made the more contained episode feel like filler. But when watching this show again knowing the whole story, the more sitcom filler episodes are some of the more fun ones to watch when the more story based episodes aren't as interesting once you know that they don't really matter. Also for a show with attorney at law in the title the lawyer stuff here is really bad. Other than Hulk, Wong and of course Daredevil who is fantastic and gives us the best episode of the season I really don't care about any of the supporting characters and that's a shame because sitcoms often have good ensemble cast and of course there is some terrible CGI and some pretty bad jokes. Overall it's a fun show with a very charismatic performance in the lead while it does have its issues I think it ultimately works when you view it as a sitcom playing around in the Marvel Universe. It's one of the only shows that when I watched it a second time I actually enjoyed it more on rewatch knowing where the plot was going and what the show was trying to be. But if you weren't keen on this the first time around I think give it a chance give it a rewatch and go into it as a fun comedy sitcom and you might enjoy it a bit more and if you don't at least Daredevil was cool. Number three Hawkeye. Now normally when I do these rankings picking between my top three even my top five is normally really hard but when it comes to these Marvel TV shows even my number three pick isn't something that I think is great and so normally getting into my top three is an achievement but in this case it kind of just feels like a consolation prize like well done you're not as bad as those other shows. So yeah my number three pick is Hawkeye which basically makes it to this spot out of consistency. It's one of the more consistent Marvel series with a beginning middle and end that feels appropriate to the show setup and the premise. It's always fun to catch up with Hawkeye giving him a bit more time to shine and it introduces us to Kate Bishop who is another nice addition to the MCU. Between them and of course Yelena we get an interesting dynamic. The show has some pretty good action the standout being that 360 degrees camera in the car chase and of course it's great to have Vincent D'Onofrio return as Kingpin. I do however feel like his reveal happened too late in the season. I think there's too many red herring villains here and I think the show would have benefited more from just outrightly having Kingpin as a villain from the start and it might have gained more interest in the show. So overall Hawkeye is one of the more consistent MCU series, it's paced better, it doesn't shift tone too much and it doesn't devolve into a big CGI ending. So it's great that it's consistent but it's consistently fine. I can see myself wanting to re-watch this one especially around Christmas time but I don't think it needs to be a series, I think it could have been cut down into a really fun, punchy, fast paced action movie focusing on Kate, Clint's past and the Kingpin set at Christmas and I think that would have been more effective. Number two, WandaVision. In second place is WandaVision, a series that actually really surprised me. For the first eight out of the nine episodes I think WandaVision is pretty phenomenal, some of the best stuff to come out of the MCU. We have fantastic performances from our two leads, great supporting characters, we have great set and production design, we have a great tone referencing sitcoms but with these extra eerie elements adding in. The pacing is fantastic keeping us in the dark for the first few episodes then revealing things at the perfect time and then going back into the hex and slowly things get weirder and weirder and it allows us to have a more character based show as we delve 
into Wanda's past and her psyche. I really think the first eight episodes are fantastic, but then we get to episode nine and it kind of just all falls apart. Wanda gets let off the hook at the end of the show. There are basically no stakes or consequences for her actions. For a more character-based show, it suddenly remembers that it's a Marvel project and rushes the ending while forcing in a big CGI fight. I think this show would have benefited from a more character-based ending because the big CGI fight just felt so out of place. It felt like it needed another episode to really draw out all these plot threads because there was so much going on to conclude in the finale and instead it just chose to do a big punch up. While many of these shows feel like movies cut up over week, this feels like it was perfectly made for TV and it uses that to its advantage with both references to other sitcoms and the mystery elements. The nine episode run gave it more time to play around and feel like a real show. The character arc Wanda is on here is super effective and this show has that emotional punch that is missing from the rest of the Disney Plus originals lower down this list. The mystery, the style, the characters, it all worked for me. I loved the week to week release of WandaVision, the mystery and the theorizing each episode was so fun. This felt like the show with the biggest impact on release that none of the other shows have quite been able to capture and this definitely uses TV the best. Overall for me, a really effective show that just misses the mark in the finale. Number one, Loki. Out of all the projects in phase four, Loki was the one I was least interested in because I really felt like Loki's journey was done after Infinity War. But again, a show that I wasn't that interested in actually ended up being my favorite. After season one of Loki, I would have had this and WandaVision switch the other way round because as much as I liked season one, it did feel like an incomplete story. It was very much a first half, but now that we've seen the second half of the story, it absolutely cements Loki as the best Disney Plus MCU show. The series has a very distinct style and look with great set design, which feels practical. It doesn't feel like a classic superhero story. There's very few fights or action scenes. Despite being a multiverse project, it actually has a very contained story with a small set of characters and ultimately it's an effective character study. After season two, what really cements Loki as my number one is because it feels like a series that was well planned out and executed in the way they wanted. It didn't feel like things were rushed or rewritten or fight scenes were forced in at the last minute. It felt like they had a two part story that they wanted to tell and they did exactly that. The new characters like Mobius, Sylvie, the different variants of Kang, Obi are all great additions to this world and it really gets you on board with this alternate version of Loki. When Loki ends the two part series, it's a great way to end his character's journey. We have Loki in Infinity War who sacrificed himself for his brother and then we have Loki in the series who sacrificed himself not only for his friends but the greater multiverse. We see Loki get everything he wanted, the power, the throne, the glorious purpose, but we see how he now views it as a burden and it comes at great personal sacrifice. It shows how you can have two different endings for essentially the same character that both work really well for different reasons and it's just so nice to have a recent part of the MCU that actually feels planned out and it's an ending that I wasn't expecting and it feels smarter than what I would have thought of. So many of these shows I watch and I feel like there are easy fixes that I can think of but the ending we get to Loki season 2 is way beyond my capabilities and that's how it should be. A multi-million dollar project should be able to outsmart me. It should be able to think of better ideas and go in unexpected directions. And the way season two ties back into season one with Loki's original conversation with Mobius, going back to he who remains and finding out more about his plan, and even going back to where Loki finished the first four movie, it is really satisfying and really effective. And so for giving Loki an unexpected and satisfying conclusion, for having a great tone and specific style, and for feeling well planned out and executing the plan effectively, Loki comes in at number one as my favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe Disney Plus show. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts and rankings down below. It's surprising to me that the shows that I thought I'd like the most are some of the weaker ones and the two shows that I didn't necessarily buy into the idea of ended up being my favorite. And those two ended up being the less classical superhero stories. And I think it shows that Disney Plus should be used to tell more of the different Marvel stories and save the classic superhero stories for the big screen. If you enjoyed this, please give the video a like. It helps my channel out so much. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this on Marvel, DC, Star Wars, or anything else amazing going on in cinema. But for now, thanks for watching. Cinema.